this car is slow, and no, that's not just because it's a four cylinder, but it is in limp mode. And what is limp mode, you might ask? Well, it's a safety mode that the car puts itself in when it detects a fault, or it thinks there's a safety issue going on, and that disables the throttle input from the pedal. So you could floor it all you want, it's not going anywhere. So we brought the car in because there's obviously a problem going on here. We have a good engine, in this case it's running very smooth, it's starting up every time, so the engine mechanically has not failed in this situation. And for the purposes of this video, we're also going to eliminate the transmission as being a problem as well. It's shifting fine, it's a good transmission. So mechanically the vehicle is good. Now we do have some lights on on the dash, we have a check engine light, we have a limp mode light or a low power mode, that's the uh, little check engine light with the down arrow in it, that means it's low on power, and a traction or stability control light. All of these are good indications of what can be going on. However, the problem seems to mostly occur on cold days when you first start up the car in the morning especially, so that's another big clue that we have to keep in mind when diagnosing this. And speaking of diagnosing, the best way to do this is to just get a code, whether you have to go someplace to get a code pulled, or you have your own scan tool that can be plugged in and it'll tell you exactly where to start with the diagnosis. So let's plug in a scan tool and see what the car has to say. I plugged in a scan tool and what do you know? We have some codes. It's important to remember that the problem being intermittent will affect the codes that you get when you plug it in. For us, we have an ECM code that is a P06A3 uh, for a five volt reference on circuit four. Uh, it doesn't tell me very specific things, so I'm gonna skip past that for a second. Uh, we have an EBCM code for uh, C0242, that's a traction control code, which actually lines up perfectly with the traction control being on on this vehicle when the problem is occurring. Now, unfortunately for us, the problem isn't occurring at this moment, of course, because I'm trying to diagnose it, but I have scanned this vehicle not too long ago, and I got this code right here. It's a P2135 for accelerator pedal position sensors one and two not plausible. And that code right there, combined with the other ones, is exactly what I wanted to see, because I know what the problem is now. Did you know that this part can fail? This is your accelerator pedal. Here's an example of an accelerator pedal that I can take apart so I can show you what it looks like inside. It's actually a fairly simple setup. You have the pedal with a mechanical connection to this lever that has four contact points on it. Those contact points correspond to this circuit board on this cap. That's an electrical connector which connects everything to the vehicle's harness and therefore to the computer, so it can know what to do when you provide different inputs on the pedal. And other than that, there's not much to it. As you provide different input on the pedal, these contact points wear out over time. That's how it eventually fails because they wear out so much that they can barely make connection anymore. Now the cold weather accentuates it because when they barely make connection to begin with, the cold causes the metal to shrink. Therefore, it changes its position just slightly, barely, but enough to break that connection. Now it gets warm again, or you turn on the heater inside the vehicle, and what do you know? Then it starts working again. That's how it becomes intermittent. Eventually, if you ignore it, which I don't recommend that you do, it gets so bad that it just stops working altogether. And that's when you get stranded on the side of the road. Now that you've seen the inside of the pedal and understood how it functions mechanically, here's one other thing that I recommend you do if you have access to it, and that is to use a scan tool that can perform some live data features. You can look at the sensors on the accelerator pedal because they have to be in sync. If they're not in sync, that's a problem and it'll trigger all those issues. So these sensors will graph a voltage value. It's a five volt reference here. I can see sensor one is staying steady at one volt. Sensor two, <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. I'm seeing it fluctuate. Even better, let's graph it. <laughs> Would you look at this graph? So I have sensor one steady at one volt, that's normal. Sensor two is at about half a volt, but it's bouncing up and down, and it's not supposed to do that. Now, they're not supposed to be at the same voltage. They are offset, but they're supposed to be perfectly synchronized. If one goes up, the other should, and clearly that is not the case. So right here, we have a faulty position sensor. We know it needs a pedal at this point, and because of that, I definitely do not want to delay this repair because it is a serious safety concern. It's not really a matter of if it will fail because it's already starting to fail. It's a matter of when it completely fails and stops responding altogether. Probably gonna be in the middle of a traffic jam or on the highway, merging on the highway. 
it's never gonna be a good time for the pedal to fail. Luckily, these pedals are a lot easier and cheaper to replace than you might think, so it's definitely not worth putting off a repair like this. Now, we got this one from oneauto.com, and it will save us time and money when repairing this vehicle. And speaking of, the only thing left to do at this point is to actually replace the pedal assembly so we can make this car safe to drive again. With that unthreaded, you'll be able to pull the pedal away, and there it is. Take the new pedal assembly. There we go, that's seated perfectly. Make sure that connector clicks and lock it on. All of our warning lights are off. With the new pedal in, I'm gonna watch some data. As you can see, it's staying perfectly steady with me not even touching that throttle pedal. Both graphs, especially that sensor two, is now staying perfectly steady. I'm gonna combine the two graphs so that you can see. At this point, the two lines are super close together, so I'm just gonna hit the gas pedal all the way down. The engine's on, so it's gonna rev. But as you can see, the two lines are fluctuating together. The two sensors need to agree like we talked about earlier. And at this point, another great way to test it is to actually test drive it. Well, we're driving around. Throttle pedal seems perfectly fine, so the issue is fixed. Here's a helpful tip I have for you. When you begin diagnosing an issue like this, or really any issue that has to do with electronics on a vehicle, make sure you check that battery voltage first. Make sure the battery is topped off at full voltage, 12.4 volts or higher. And while you are diagnosing, because the key is in the on position and the computer's doing stuff, make sure you plug a charger onto that battery because low voltage can cause some crazy things to happen and you'll get some weird results on a scan tool.